Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities in Miniature. We've got a big pile of stuff in front of us. This is the Necron half of the Indomitus box because my brother wanted the Space Marines. Actually, specifically, he wanted the boring drab regular guys instead of the fancy blinged out Blade Guard veterans or whatever they're called. That, that's a whole different story, but he's got his whole like stripped down Primaris force that he's building, so maybe we'll see those. And you can actually look at them on Daka Daka if you want to see too, because they're already there. Look for Raptors, but that's beside the point. We're going to look at the Necrons today. I am quite curious how these guys are going to get put together. First things first, we are going to have, well, we've got a double sprue of guns with a few of the bodies. I'm thinking there's a duplicate. Yes, there is. Okay. Are they actually duplicates, though? Okay, they are the exact same frame, so I'm going to guess it is 10 and 10. And you have your scarabs on there as well. They are push fit. If that's a deal breaker for you, I'm sorry. It's not like you can't glue them together still. You do have your choice of weapons for... Either squad, I'm going to go 10 and 10, half and half. Makes the most sense, and more than likely, I'm just going to use them in a kill team anyway. So, might as well go for a little bit of variety. So, exactly the same. And then you have these little bases of rock piles. That's what you're going to attach your scarab swarms to. Heads all look vaguely the same. Don't know yet. <laughs> we'll find out, and I will report back to you all. This is the character frame slash walker parts. You can see this side is made up with the bulk of the legs for that. One thing I did notice was the legs on these models seem a lot thicker than um, Illuminor Zerus's frame. Then again, he was a build-it-yourself model rather than a push fit. Like the size of the legs there are a lot bulkier. Interesting, though. I'm looking at this leg right here. This is for the Scorpic Lord. And again, the proportions are a lot thicker. Then again, he is a tripod as opposed to Zeras with his four legs and four arms and little manipulators and whatnot. All right, what do we have here? This looks to be our Scorpic Destroyers. Surprisingly, it looks like it's only one frame. Hopefully, I'm not short one, but I'm going to guess that's correct because I can see there's three blades. Well, the one large blade and then two pairs of smaller blades. Fingers crossed that's all there is. Looks like it because I can see there's three of the shoulder pad torso armors there as well. So I don't think that's going to be a problem. Surprisingly they're only on 40 millimeter bases. I was expecting bigger. Here is our lieutenant equivalent with his matching marine equivalent. Like I said my brother's not into the fancy blinged out guys. Especially with their tunics sticking out of their pants like that. And then finally we have the Necron Lord model. I gotta say, he looks a lot bigger. A lot bigger than the ones in the past. I don't... Oh, I wonder. I he might have a few old Necron Finecast Lords, but I don't know 100% for sure. I know I got rid of a lot of them to help pay for other things to show off on this channel. And I always, always hated the old Necron warrior frame. So this already is inherently a lot nicer looking. I, I just, I dig that. I never was a fan of the big glowy rods. Uh, I also wasn't a fan of like on the Immortals having to paint those teeny tiny lines in the cracks. Um, I do have at least a few built Immortals. I don't know if they're painted or not, but we'll grab some of those. I'll put everything together and we'll give you guys a good look-see. So yeah, just right off the bat, you can see here that the Lord is definitely going to be a bit bigger than the regular Warriors. So I gotta say, value-wise, it looked actually like a pretty good deal, and I'm going to take a wild guess that a good chunk of this, obviously with those new starter sets coming, they've split it all up like that, but I can totally see these all ending up as part of a start collecting box in the future as well. Interesting to see as well that the Lieutenant type guy is going to be on his own individual sprue. So that is an interesting fact. Maybe we'll see some variations on these as well since they're already kind of keeping them similar in terms of size all right time to build let's see how these guys turn out all right so we're gonna have Illuminor Zeris 
hang out here with us just to give you guys a good sense of scale on everything. Uh, we got all of our parts built for the Necron side of the Indominus box. And I'm slowly but surely trying to find the models that I want to start with. I guess we'll start with the Necron Lord. Let's see if we can get him closer up here. One thing that I had a serious issue with, with just about everybody that was included in this box, but mostly just the hero models, was they had a lot of this kind of over-under thing going on where you needed to slide the head or the tubes connecting the head underneath the chest armor. And I'll tell you this, it was a pain in the butt. Uh, it just, nothing wanted to cooperate with me, and I really did not enjoy that aspect of building these guys. Um, you can see a lot of stress marks. I know I bent up the fin things on top of his torso armor there. You can see it's kind of stress marks. It's all kind of white. Besides the Lord, the Necro... Oh, what are they called? I already... Scorpec Necron. Necron Scorpex. The Scorpec Destroyers, I believe. Um, the Scorpion Dudes. Their heads... And having to get it under and over the armor was a major, major pain. So one thing I found really interesting was these guys are a heck, a heck of a lot thicker in terms of joints and sturdiness than Zeras. But obviously Zeras has more limbs, so I guess they can be lighter. Whereas this guy is a lot thicker in terms of his joints and his body parts. Actually, all of them are. Once built, I thought these guys were a lot sturdier than Zeras. Zeras is a stuff going on everywhere. These guys are pretty simple in that regard. Obviously, they are on larger bases than I thought because the Necron Lord is on a 40 millimeter. These guys are on 65 because why do we need to have uniform base sizes, right? And finally, we have the third member of the group. I really do dig them. I can't make up my mind if I want to try doing them in bronze or just stick with boring old, you know, Necron gunmetal. We've got the Royal Warden getting their cape robe things off of the sprue was a lesson in frustration again lots of stress marks as i was trying to be ever so gentle and i mean i've got a good pair of you know side clippers so it's not like i'm not experienced in having to get these things de-sprued but still those guys all the heroes honestly were a hassle and a half to get picked up cleaned up and ready for the table we have our little, I don't even remember what this guy's called now, bug thing. It's interesting. Visually, they're quite distinct. I really like what they've done with the Necron line. I think there's a lot more visual uniqueness than ever before, so that's a good thing. Our Plasmancer. I really like this model. And despite the fact that he has no legs and he's floating, he does feel pretty solid and stable, which is funny in and of itself. He just floats there. We have our little sickle dudes. Again, whose names escape me at the moment. I'm bad with all the new names. I, I really am. Maybe I already put the other one there? No, I don't see them anywhere. And then we have the actual warriors themselves. So, for the most part, the warriors went together all right. But there were two or three that for whatever reason their arms just did not want to line up and I mean I used the directions that came with the box so it's not like I should have any difficulties I'm following the directions that GW gave me didn't matter I did like the fact that every Necron warrior does have the option of having a nice intact head or a shot up damaged one now some of their bodies are more messed up than others like even this guy you can see he's got just wires flailing everywhere Whereas there's some that are a lot more clean, except, oh no, I take that back, this guy's got like almost skeletal legs coming out. There were some wires sticking out of his arm there. Some heads didn't want to cooperate. Now, I had the same issue with Zeras that I had with a lot of these, the newer models, where the front and the back of a head are two separate parts. And they almost have like this cog-like pattern, you can kind of see it there, where you have to fit everything together. It's not just this nice, simple piece. And to me, it seems like being obtuse just to be obtuse about it. Just to just to make things more difficult for people who want to convert. Uh, you know, it doesn't seem like it's really necessary. 
to cut the models where they did. There were a lot of weird design decisions like that. I mean, I do enjoy, from an engineering standpoint, checking out how they come up with these crazy concoctions. But some of the parts end up feeling really loose because of those weird combinations for being push fits. And the destroyers, the Scorpec guys in particular, they have just a weird T bar thing that goes on the inside that connects the torso to the tripod eventually. And if I didn't bother to glue it, it felt really jiggly, even more so I haven't glued them to the bases yet, just so I can pop them off and paint their undersides a little bit easier. Also worth noting is it is nice that every warrior does have the option of either the blaster or the flare. That was a nice touch. And they're infinitely better than the original warriors. I hated the warriors on those 25 millimeter bases. They just, they did nothing for me. Now, obviously, they're still not going to be as big as a death mark or an immortal despite some of them having similar guns, but not exactly. So for those of you who are worried that your immortals are going to be replaced by basic warriors, I guess almost in a way primarist, much in the same way traditional marines were. And then finally we've got our scarab swarms. Now the scarab swarms are actual swarms. They look pretty neat. I just don't like the fact that, well this one's okay. This one you can see they have the rocks at least to kind of be leaping off of. Reminds me of the scarabs that came with the old Tomb King sets. But I think it's this one. This guy does not have anything special. He's just got these big, ugly connecting rods to shove into the base. I wasn't a fan of that. These guys actually have a two-part set. They have rods that actually connect to the rocks, and then you connect the whole thing to the base itself. And funny enough, I don't know if I just mix things up. There are two of these bases that have the rocks underneath them, and they aren't compatible. I don't know if that was me misreading numbers or me just mixing things up, but no. I struggled and fought with these two, but it turns out, you know, I was just doing it wrong. And that actually brings me to another point that I'd really like to bring up about these guys. Uh, the actual rods and push fit for everything, a lot of them were really tight and really hard to get in there. The warriors, I mean, all the characters, it just overall was really frustrating. Um, our big walker thing. It was funny because I heard somebody complaining about the fact that there were no big centerpiece showcase models in this set and to me this is actually pretty decent it's no worse than the blight drones i mean the blight drone wasn't all that big and complex and considering how many 40 and 65 millimeter characters we ended up with in this set i don't even have all the what's it called warriors on the camera here so that ought to tell you something right there it's not bad uh it's not as big as the martian tripods actually hold on let me see i think i have a tripod handy and actually, I do have a tripod handy. Um, these are the tripods from All Quiet on the Martian front. Obviously, they don't have as many legs as the Necron one, but you know what? If you're playing proxy games, especially if you want to get that newer one on there, it might be a good option. Whee! So how do they stack up? So earlier I was showing... <laughs> so I just shove everything out of the way here. Comparing it to a immortal's body. Grabbing some random choices of models. I think they are definitely continuing the tradition of slowly but surely creeping up in scale. But to me, that's a good thing. I think just due to the fragile nature of these kits, uh, the bigger the better, honestly. Uh, how do they stack up with the Primaris? Let's get you out of the way. So again, you know, Immortals, Death Marks, there's still going to be a little bit of space there in terms of size, but if we want to start to get into, like, some of the characters, obviously the Scorpex are going to be much larger. Our Lord is as impressive as he should be. I think that's all of the main characters that we had, our little floaty bug guy. pet 
We're getting one of the larger marine characters on there. It's like the only marine I think in Indominus that I actually wanted. This dude's just just cool. But anyway, yeah. So you can see, I think overall they're going to scale well uh, if you have an existing collection. So stuff like the Death Marks and Immortals aren't going to look out of place alongside um, uh, Witch Guard and all those guys. I'm like trying to remember the names of some of the units I can't even remember. But to me, the real strength of Necron lie in the fact that they're just cool looking killer robots. And I mean, the fact that we've gotten a whole bunch of unique looking sculpts in the Indominus box gives me hope that we're going to get even more as the line progresses. Just using the Death Guard as an example of, you know, how things got released. We got all sorts of interesting guys as the line progressed. So I do have high hopes that we're going to continue to see new kits. Obviously, we've got, like, the Void Dragon Catan thing. We've got the Silent King. We've got Terrain and the Monoliths and... There is a fair amount. Um, I can finally honestly see myself wanting to field an actual Necron army rather than just kill teams and, you know, skirmish style units for other games as well. But, you know, I think if the price is right and you get a nice big bulky amount of warriors and any of the various starters as they come out, uh, I can definitely see that being a nice, easy to build up, go to purchasable army. And if it means having to build less of the fiddly obnoxious stuff like in the past uh, i'm all for it so definitely a cool set and i am absolutely looking forward to seeing what kind of evil killer robots we have in store for us in the future with that said this has been high lord tamberlane with obscurities and miniatures saying thanks for watching we'll see you back here soon Bye bye